Welcome to our review and look back at Horizon Forbidden West after a platinum run. Throughout this video I've tried to not show any spoilers as much as possible. Horizon Forbidden West follows on from the first game Horizon Zero Dawn. It does a fantastic job of introducing you to the world whether you played Zero Dawn or not. This handling of the ongoing story is done extremely well whilst also showing you new mechanics that make Forbidden West different to its predecessor. New and old characters are introduced in a way that makes you want to get to know them better and answers questions about what returning characters have been up to in the time since Zero Dawn. The starting area does a good job of introducing you to the new mechanics and allowing you time to adjust to a different way of playing. The stories this area gives you lets you know that you are going to meet some interesting characters along the journey. With so many mini stories on the go, the world of Forbidden West feels alive and lived in. Graphically, the game shows what next-gen consoles are truly capable of, with the weather showcased throughout the game. The graphics have also shown at their best as you transition from one landscape to another. Moving from the harsh desert to lush greenery is handled well and visibly different, but also natural. Animals are still there to be hunted for upgrade materials for pouches, but unfortunately the animals seem to have been forgotten about. From unnatural behaviour, the fish that disappear into thin air as you're about to catch them, animal hunting is still frustrating, but a new mechanic has been added to show you the best location to find the materials needed, which does add some relief. The story is one of joy and surprise alongside sadness and a real sense of what could have been with the earth and how it got into the state it is in. The story showcases man's obsession and greed, but also gives examples of people that put others before themselves. Aloy's story continues to move forward at a good pace that allows you to understand her feelings, whilst also maintaining progress of her cause. Much the same as Zero Dawn, hollow points give you the information that helps shape the world around you whilst filling in the blanks of the past. Read everything you find. Forbidden West introduces new mechanics and not all of them were needed. The new armor variations that can also be dyed is a nice touch, but I found once that I found one that suited my playstyle, I didn't ever feel the need to change. Others might like this mechanic if cosmetics are your thing, for me I felt less is more. This also goes for weapons as well. I personally feel Forbidden West gives you too much choice. Yes, the frantic battles against the machines do now involve a lot more tactics, rather than rushing in, but I felt I mainly used two to three weapons at the most due to my playstyle. Yes, we could have tried others, but once you find a weapon that works for you, why change? I did enjoy the upgrading of weapons that gives you enhancements and different arrow types and felt this was handled really well. Food for me was a lost cause. I never needed it or used it in our playthrough. This was something that I felt added a bit of realism but missed the mark when it came to actual gameplay. Trophy hunting was relatively straightforward as the majority of trophies could be gained from playing through the game at your own speed and style. Collectibles never seemed a chore, more enjoyable to do as each had a reason behind them, including the drones that changed the background for Gaia. Forbidden West was a game I really enjoyed, and I'm hoping more is to come from this game in DLC and even a third game hopefully. The fantastic moments from the lights in Las Vegas to the snowy mountains far outweigh the minor gripes of a fantastic follow-up to Zero Dawn. I'm left wanting more, and still have questions I would like answered within the game world. After 93 hours, we now say goodbye to Aloy, although hope it's only temporary.